no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what is going on? You are watching the Raiders Report, and today's show presented by our good friends, Savvy Lifestyle. If anybody's looking for an awesome Father's Day gift, or I don't know, you just need some badass kitchen knives, we got you covered here. Head on over to chatsports.com slash knife, where you can save 50% off, but you gotta use code 50 Raiders. Don't worry, if you can't remember this, I'll go ahead and put that in the comments and in the description. So what are we talking about on today's video? We're talking about hot seats, and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of players that I could probably put on this list, but what I wanted to be able to do is rank players from five all the way down to one. So the guy that's got number one next to his name, that means his seat is the hottest. Number five means it's hot, but it's not quite as hot as number one. We're making sense, right? So we're going to be breaking down, ranking the hottest Raiders seats coming up this upcoming season. At number five, I got Cleland Furl selected number four overall in the 2019 NFL Draft. Furl will be real. He really struggled as a rookie. When you talk about the aspect of him trying to produce right away, it simply wasn't there. The Raiders in 2018 had only 13 sacks, which was ranked dead last, and it wasn't even close. They got better in year two, regressed a little bit now in year three, but like all I'm saying is this. When it comes to Furl, as a rookie, did not play so well. 2020, I'd made the argument before that I thought it was the best defensive tackle, best defensive lineman for the Raiders this upcoming season. But when you draft somebody in the top five, he needs more sack production. And even though he's been a very good run stopper, especially on the interior, when you're drafted that early, people want to see more sacks. So, Clee, I know you can do it, my brother. So go ahead. Let's get it done here. The next player that we're going to go ahead and talk about here on the Raiders Report is Henry Ruggs. So he's going to be number four on our list of Raiders on the hot seat. I like Henry Ruggs a lot. He's a good player. Selected number 12 overall in the 2020 NFL Draft. The dude has speed for days. So much speed that you really can't teach it. But... When you were selected as the number one receiver in the, your past year's draft over guys like CeeDee Lamb, over a guy like Justin Jefferson, over a guy like Jerry Judy, you need to have a wide receiver one. Do I think that he can do it? Sure. Do some people need to pump the brakes? Because, I mean, if you remember, there's this guy named Cliff Branch. It took him two years to be able to get it done. So maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit. However... When you have as much speed and as much physical ability as he has, and when Derek Carr says things like, he's the greatest player I've ever practiced with, I want to see a little bit more consistency out of Henry Ruggs. He had good time last year with 26 catches, 452 yards. You saw bursts of like, wow, this guy is legit. Did he open up things for, for the running game? Absolutely. Did he open things up for other receivers? Absolutely. But I think we can all agree, Ruggs needs to be a little bit better in his second year. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and comment on the pin comment. For those of you that don't know what this means, you're watching this on YouTube, you are going to get hit with a YouTube ad break. So when the ad is playing, I want you to scroll on down because the very, very first question is going to be this. Comment a Raider on the hot seat. I want you to do it right now. Number three on my list in terms of being Raiders on the hot seat, it's Damon Arnett. Selected 19th overall in the 2020 NFL Draft. The Raiders had two first-round picks. Ruggs was okay. Damon was a major, we'll say, disappointment. Not only did he struggle on the field, he also struggled off the field. Lost a severe amount of weight. There's been rumors out there if maybe he got addicted to some painkillers as well, which might have hurt his ability to you know, be focused and actually get into the, the gym and be a real gym rat, which is what we want. Mike Mayock has definitely voiced his frustrations with him, and when you talk about all the players that they sign in free agency, not that Casey Hayward, Rasul Douglas, not that they're major, major names, but Hayward was brought in for a reason, right? I mean, like, we know why, and he could end up being the starting cornerback over Damon Arnett. Now, Arnett has been working out really hard this offseason. He's put on some good weight, and he's back to about 195 pounds, but when you draft somebody in round one, you're looking for a top cornerback. Statistically, he was one of the worst cornerbacks in football last year, but it could have just been because of COVID, and he was a rookie. At number two on my list of Raiders on the hot seat, I got Jonathan Abrams, selected number 27 overall in the 2019 draft. In 2019, the Raiders had three first-round picks. The first one was Cleveland Furl. 24 overall was Josh Jacobs. Then this guy came in here in Jonathan Abram. He missed most of his rookie season, literally played in one game, which was Monday Night Football against the Denver Broncos. I remember being there, and it was a great game. 
hurt his shoulder a little bit, and then last season he was statistically the worst safety in 2020 according to Pro Football Focus and basically according to every single coverage metric you could have. The reason why I'm going to turn up the heat here a little bit is because you can see that he's talented. He is a very good run stopper, but he has even said it himself, Sometimes he needs to drop it back a little bit. Far too often he's looking for the hit stick to lay it out. He needs to be a little bit smarter, but I do think that the Bradley system it is the perfect thing for Abram. So I'm not afraid to say this. If he can't get it done with Bradley, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to get it done in the NFL. Coming off a year, we had 86 tackles, which led the Las Vegas Raiders. Two INTs, which is impressive. The five pass breakups. But again, he needs to not only protect himself, he needs to start being... A little bit more reliable in coverage, but he's going to play up in the box. He's going to be up closer to the line of scrimmage. And even though he might never be a good coverage safety, all I want to see is Abram use the right way. And again, if he can't get it done in Bradley's system, I don't know if he's ever going to be able to get it done. Now, today's show is presented by our good friends, Savvy Lifestyle. My man, Will, is a diehard Raider fan. He hit me up. He's like, Mitch, I got an awesome 17-piece professional knife set. I want to put it on the Raiders report because I know there's a lot of dads out there that they're going to be looking for some awesome gifts during Father's Day. So head on over to chatsports.com slash knife because I don't know about you, ma'am. I love my dad to death. That's, uh, that's my number one dude. He's a little picky when it comes to finding an awesome gift. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money and hook him up, and who knows, maybe he'll cook you up something nice. Usually these knives are $99 and uh, 99 cents, excuse me. But we're going to cut that down. 50% off. I'm going to say that again. 50% off, only $49.99. But how do you get it? You got to go to chatsports.com slash knife. You got to use promo code 50 Raiders. It'll be in the comments. It'll be in the description. If you're wondering what kind of knives am I working with, not only are they silver and black and they look really clean, which obviously every Raider fan likes, they're the perfect combination of modern visual design, functionality, practicality, and ideal for literally every single day in the kitchen, whether that's, you know, dicing, slicing, mincing, peeling, chopping meats, vegetables, fruits, breads, or even slicing pizza. We're going to be hooking you up here, and Raider Nation is family, right? So Will, he's a diehard Raider fan. He owns these knives himself, and he's going to be able to get them to you as quick as possible. So if you need new knives, get yourself hooked up. If you also want to support a Raiders fan, it's chatsports.com slash knife. All right, let's go to the number one player on my hot seat, and I want every single person that comes across this video to look at the very first note because it's true. Derek Carr is number one. Carr is always on the hot seat because he plays quarterback, but even if he is on the hot seat, I don't really honestly believe that he deserves to be on the hot seat be simply because Let's face it, he was pretty good last season. He's got a career record of 47-63 and 63 with zero playoff games. Anytime we talk about Derek Carr, think about the off seasons, all these rumors, all the freaking time, right? I mean, I'm almost blue in the face talking about him. However, there's always going to be people out there that are like, oh, he hasn't won games. I've said it a hundred times in the show. Wins do not dictate how good a quarterback is. I think quarterback wins is the dumbest stat when you're actually looking at quarterback talent. But he doesn't have any playoff wins, even though in 2016, the back injury, we all know he probably would have won that game. The thing that I want to really hit here is, though, he's gotten better every single year under Gruden. Like, and not only a little bit better, but like a lot better. So there's always going to be heat, and he's the quarterback, which is why I really had to put him at number one, even though I... Kind of hated that I did it. So last season, 27 touchdowns, nine, nine, nine interceptions. Holy shit, Mitch. Get it together or else you're going to get cut by Savvy Lifestyle. Not going to be able to make any more videos. 30 years old, two years left on his contract. And if he doesn't play well this season, you can really move on from him next year. And it doesn't cost you anything, like no dead cap hit whatsoever. Then maybe the Raiders look at drafting a quarterback. Maybe they go out and sign somebody. But he also really needs to be able to hold on to the football. Eight lost fumbles last year. Put 11 on the ground. Both of those numbers led the NFL. So here are my five Raiders on the hot seat. Again, I had Cleveland Furl at number five. Henry Ruggs at four. Damon Arnett at three. Jonathan Abram at number two. Derek Carr at number one. So if you haven't gone to the pinned comment yet and let me know who is on the hottest seat, how about this? At least go down there and tell me out of the five players that I talked about on today's video, who seats the hottest? If you think it's Cleveland Furl, I want you to type 99. And remember, that's the number he changed to. Henry Ruggs, type 11. Damon Arnett, type 20. Jonathan Abram, 24. Or Derek Carr, type 4. 
If you've made it this far in the video, that means, hell, I got to be doing something right around here. If you're looking for the best coverage around the Las Vegas Raiders on YouTube, we have the most subscribers, the most interaction, most comments. Why? Because we're an interactive channel, and I know Raider Nation loves to get down. So if you find yourself looking for news and rumors in the offseason, if you find yourself looking for an awesome video, maybe when you're driving to work, while you're sitting down dropping a number two, while you're in the shower, I don't care where you watch it or how you watch it, if you love the Raiders and you need content, go ahead and subscribe. So you thought I was just going to talk about players, right? No siree. Let's go to the next guy on my list. It's John Gruden, the head coach. I get it. He signed a 10-year, $100 million fully guaranteed deal. But in his record the past three seasons, he is 19 and 29. Now here's the issue with the guaranteed deal. Technically, if the Raiders were to fire him right now, they'd still have to give him 60 million dollars okay or actually i guess it's 70 million dollars coming at if he struggles this year then it would be 60 million but i'm going to keep bringing this quote up because i don't want anybody from raider nation and i especially don't want john gruden to forget it if i can't get it done i am not going to take their money okay john if you can't get it done this year i get it you went four and twelve seven and nine eight and eight that is progression but if you're sitting here telling me right now that after four years with over seven first-round picks, with all the moves that this team has made in free agency, if you still can't get to the playoffs, that's a major concern to me. Plus, there's an extra team that's able to get into the playoffs. So all I'm saying is this. I am cranking up the heat on John Gruden, and if they have a bad year this year, I'm going to do my best to say, hey, John, you better live up to what you said. So if you guys have any questions about anything you saw on today's video, please don't be afraid to hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRent365. I'm going to be doing an IG live this weekend. I got to talk to my girlfriend whether or not it can be Saturday or Sunday, but I do promise you this for Chucky Heads. Raiders Instagram live at MitchellRent365. So go ahead and give me a follow. I don't want you to miss it. The next two we're going to be bringing up here is the general manager, Mike Mayock, because I it's not fair to me to only point the fingers at the players. It's also important to go ahead and point the finger at Mayock and John Gruden because they're the one that kept the guy around like Paul Gunther for as long as they did. They moved on from Brenson Buckner. They decided to make horrible trades for, I don't know, Antonio Brown, Trent Brown, all these signings that we've done. I mean, it's just on and on and on. But that's when you need to start looking at Mike Mayock. We brought him in to be this draft guru. And the 2019 draft minus, you know, Cleveland Furl and Abram, those first round picks, there was a lot of great picks in there. A lot of diamonds in the rough like a Mike May or like a Max Crosby. However, last year that was disappointing. Let's be real. Last year's draft class was a super disappointment. And if you're not able to draft and you can't sign key players in free agency, then I'm sorry. It's time to go. So who's seat is just a little bit hotter? John Gruden or Mike Mayock. I want every single person to vent with me on this one. If you think it's John Gruden, type JG. If you think it's Mike Mayock, type MM. I'm going to go ahead and type Mike Mayock simply because he doesn't have the guarantees Gruden does, but you know what? I won't be afraid to type MM and JG.